But today I wanted to talk to you about the spirit of power. The spirit of power. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of power. In Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, Jesus said this, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The power of the Holy Spirit, I want to look at just two simple options this morning or two facets of the power of the Holy Spirit. Number one, I wanted to talk to you about the power to live. The power to live. In Galatians 5 and 25, it says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And if you ask what that means, Paul would answer the question in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse number 5. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The Bible goes on and says, The mind that is governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to live and to live free from our past and the works of death. We snuck out of town Friday and Saturday, ran down to a place we love to go to, my wife and I, Amelia Island. It's just two hours south of here, and there's a place we always stay and and a place we always go and eat on the beach. And we just wanted to slip out for an overnight trip. And Saturday, I was taking my wife around. By the way, I have a secondary career. Besides being a pastor, I'm also a chauffeur. (laughs) And so... uh, I am perfectly content to uh, sit in my truck and read my iPad and and take her from place to place to place. Now, if you don't know this, if you're interested in this sort of thing, Amelia Island has got some of the best junk stores anywhere. There's about six or eight of them. I'm not kidding. And we hit every one of them, and I just pull in, let her out, and sit in the truck and read. And I I was sitting there, and I was thinking about this verse of Scripture. And I was thinking about how excited I was to be able to come in this morning. Can I get you to put that last one I used back up for me, please? I was thinking about how excited I was to come in this morning and how I was anticipating a move of the Holy Spirit. How can you do that, Pastor? How can you anticipate a move of the Holy Spirit? Because he goes where he's welcome. And I want him to touch my mind and to cleanse my flesh And I want him to use me. And I need to say this to somebody here this morning. As long as you are allowing sin to govern your flesh and your life, you are so missing out on the life of the Holy Spirit. And it is not worth it. And I know what I'm talking about. I know my past. I know my failures. I know my mistakes. And I'd rather live in the Holy Spirit than live in the, the, the death of the bondage of sin. Hello. I, I'd rather have that quickening in my spirit. I'd rather have that, that awakening in my spirit. He goes on and he says this in Romans 8 and 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death, oh, look at that, the misdeeds of the body. You see, if you're trying to overcome sin by yourself, you're going to continue to fail. But if you'll allow the Holy Spirit to get in this thing, if you'll allow the Spirit of God to get in this battle, you can start to overcome and start living in the Spirit instead of dying in the flesh. Hello, somebody. If by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Verse 14, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Amen. Pastor Kyle just sang it. I am a child of God. Say it with me. I am a child of God. Why? Because of the infilling of the Spirit of God. That's why. Because he lives in me and he breathes in me and he works in me. And I walk with him. I'm going to keep in step with the Spirit. 
That's what we read just a few minutes ago. If you're going to live in the Spirit, you need to walk in the Spirit. Keep in step with Him. I need His leadership. I need His guidance. I need His power. I need His overcoming grace. I need His wisdom. I need Him to be the alarm bell to tell me when trouble's coming. Come on, help me somebody. I need to live in the Holy Spirit and I can't. And I I just need to make this statement this morning. With all, with all of this stuff going on, everything that we are dealing with. And I told somebody the other day, I've got COVID fatigue. And they looked at me and kind of stepped back. And I said, I, I, I didn't say I'm sick with COVID. I said, I'm sick of COVID. Anybody? Yeah. And I'm sick of being told how I'm supposed to hide and how I'm supposed to do and be and act. And I have just decided, I'm not trying to offend you. I have decided I am going to live. Give the Lord a hand of praise if you want to. I I am going to live. I'm not going to fuss with you. I'm not going to argue with you. Lord, have mercy. My own nephew called me this weekend and wanted to argue. And I I said, you do what you want. You're a grown man. You want to wear a mask? Wear it. You don't? Don't. You want to get vaccinated? Do it. If you don't, don't. I'm not going to fight. I'm going to live. If we have 100 in church, we have 100. If we have 200, we have 200. If we have 20, we have 20. I'm going to live. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to live in worry. I'm not going to live in doubt. Say, well, pastor, are you saying you won't catch this? No, I'm not saying I won't catch it. I might get it, but I'm still going to live. What if it kills you? I'm still going to live. I have a guarantee. I have... You You listen here. You stand over my body. You look in my casket. You tell Missy how good he looks. But you just know this. I'm shouting on the streets of glory. And I'm tired. Prince, I was preaching. Now I'm going to middle, sir. I'm tired of the hypocrites. Now, listen to me. The Spirit of God is flowing in this house. If you went to Walmart yesterday, but you didn't come to church today, you're a hypocrite. Because I guarantee you this place is cleaner than Walmart is. We go through looking like Ghostbusters with a fogging machine. Blowing whatever it is all over this. It'll kill anything. If you get too close to it, it'll kill you. I sucked in a lung full of it one night, on Wednesday night. I couldn't hardly preach. I don't know what it is, but it's powerful. Don't you sit at home letting fear rob you. You need to, if you're going out anywhere else, you need to be in the house of the Lord. Come on, give him a better hand of praise than that. John chapter 10, verse number 10. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Amen, somebody. Not only am I going to live, but I'm going to live blessed. I'm going to live in the blessing of God. Why? Because he spoke a promise and he keeps his promises. The Bible said that you know this story. I've preached this message two or three times in the years that I've been here. That a king by the name of Balak hired a prophet by the name of Balaam to come and curse God's people. And he couldn't do it. Why? Because God had blessed them. Numbers 23 and 20. Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. Is what Balaam said. I'm going to live in the blessing of God. I'm going to live in the mercy of God. I'm going to live in the power of God. I'm going to live. Hallelujah. Pastor, are you trying to pick a fight? No, I'm trying to get you to wake up, church. Quit Quit letting this world tell you how to live. Let the Word of God tell you how to live. You got room? You got room for another one? 
You got time for another one? <laughs> one more thing I wanted to mention today. He's the spirit of power. He gives us the power to live. And if you'll remember in Acts 1 and 8, he said, you will be my witnesses. Somebody say witness, please. He gives us the power to witness. And my Lord, we need to be speaking the word of God. I need those of you that can rein me in to pray for me right now that I preach this positive instead of negative. Jeremiah 1 and 4. The word of the Lord came to me, and the word of the Lord is still coming to his people. This day and age. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now, some of you would say, well, that's a special calling. Well, if you read Psalm 139, it said that while you were being formed in your mother's womb, he was watching over you. And there is not a word on your tongue altogether that he does not know it. So you and I, us common folk, we can grab that promise right there and hold on to it just, just like Jeremiah did. Now watch what he does. Alas, sovereign Lord, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. All right, we got three things that God warns Jeremiah about in this passage right here. Number one is to stop voicing disqualification. What does that mean? Oh, I can't speak the word of God. I'm just a common person. I'm not like you, Pastor Sean. I don't have that calling on my life. God said, stop. Go to the next verse, verse 7. The Lord said, do not say, I am too young. You must go. You must go. You need to stop voicing disqualification. I can't speak the word of God. I can't speak a prophetic word. Have you asked? Have you asked? Have you said, God, use me? God, speak through me. Listen to me every week, not just every week, but almost every day. I'm crying out to God saying, speak through me. I didn't learn how to preach in college. I didn't learn how to preach at a church. I learned how to preach in the prayer closet when I'm alone with God and talking to him. My anointing comes from his presence and his presence alone. And you would be amazed what you could do if you will surrender yourself in the closet of prayer, in the secret place of prayer, just you and him. I got nothing against prayer meetings, but there has to be some one-on-one time. So Jeremiah stopped voicing disqualifications. The second thing he warned him to do, he said, you better speak the word obediently. You better speak the word carefully. You better not be taking scripture and twisting it out of context to fit your argument. Quit. Oh, this is where I'm going to get in trouble, Prince. God's not a Republican and he ain't a Democrat either. Quit twisting scripture for politics. Quit. Quit. Speak the word to edify. Build people up, not tear them down. I want to speak the word that helps people and encourages people. Come on, help me, somebody. I want to speak the word. I want to speak unity, not division. I want to speak faith instead of fear. Help me. Peace instead of turmoil. Blessing instead of cursing. Power instead of weakness. Life instead of death. Positive instead of negative. Come on, help me, somebody. I want to preach the word. We're the church. We're the church. We're called to win people to Christ. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to do. You know, we talked about it 20 years ago yesterday. uh, I was in my office at Leesburg Church of God, Leesburg, Georgia, right over outside Albany. My music minister, Kurt, his office was right across the hall from mine. Our doors were right even in the hallway. And uh, the way my desk faced, I could see the door right there. And He tapped on the door, stuck his head inside and said, Pastor, I think we need to go find a TV somewhere and turn it on. Something's going on. I said, what? He said, well, Becky just called me and told me there's been something happened up in New York. I'm not sure. I said, all right. We didn't have a TV at the church and, you know, didn't really have internet and all that stuff. And, uh, 
went home and looked at it and here we are 20 years later and I've seen Republican presidents and Democratic presidents and Republican governors and Democratic governors and you know what? Not much has changed. And the world still hadn't come to an end. But I don't regret 20 years of preaching. I don't regret 20 years of leading people to Jesus Christ. I don't regret not one time baptizing somebody in water. I don't regret not one time taking members into the church. I don't regret not one time teaching, preaching, witnessing, sharing, being in a small group, whatever. Listen, there's certain, certain things that matter and certain things that don't matter. Why don't you get focused on the kingdom? Why don't you get focused on the kingdom? Why don't you get focused on the kingdom? And let all that other stuff sort itself out. God's still sovereign. He's still in control. Let me, let me finish the calling of Jeremiah. The first thing he told him to do was to stop voicing disqualification. Stop saying, I can't do it. You can. Second thing he told him to do was to speak the word obediently. Now, I want to take a look at this. Let's go on. Uh, go to verse number 8. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you and will rescue you. Third thing, I'm almost done. Joel, if you'll come, please. Third thing he said is do not be afraid. Stop voicing disqualification. Obediently speak the word. And do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Verse number nine. Then the Lord reached out his hand, touched my mouth, and said to me, I put my words in your mouth. Keep going, please. Today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy, overthrow, to build and to plant. Now with our words we can destroy and we can overthrow. With our words we can tear down the strongholds of the enemy. With the word of God we can tear down the strongholds of the enemy. But also with the word of God we can build up and plant and speak life. Help me somebody. Toby Max says speak life. I love that. I love that. Verse 11 please. I'm almost done. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. Now you need to go back and find one of my earlier messages where I preached this because that's good stuff. But it would take too long right now what, what the significance of the almond branch is. There's significance right there. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Watching. And that word watching, I'll just give one illustration and I'll quit. That word watching doesn't mean kick back with your feet up watching the television set. Okay? It doesn't mean relaxing. It means anticipating. Anticipating. It's almost like he's on the edge of his seat, leaning forward, ready to leap into action. When? When is God going to leap into action? When you and I start proclaiming his word. Because he's going to back up his word. Earlier when I was preaching, I said, I've got a guarantee of life that the enemy can't touch, the medical field can't touch, and COVID can't take. Come on, help me. I've got a guarantee of life. He is waiting. He is watching. He is anxious. He is ready to fulfill his word. Finally, the calling on this church has not been lifted. We have to have the power of the Spirit and the word of God in order to reap this harvest. Would you stand to your feet? I know you've been doing it a lot today. Would you, before we pray, give the Lord a really good hand of praise right now?